happen. Um, and we need to make sure that we provide a safe environment for people. So, you know, one of the things that we can enforce on is spitting, which is a particular concern during COVID. Um, we also relaxed parking restrictions last time, which we're not planning to do at this moment in time, along with the rest of London councils. Um, we may be issuing um, permits to some key workers so that they can park for free in certain places. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much business as usual. OK, thank you, Jackie. And obviously, um, just to say as well that all, I know that some people have had issues previously with parking permits. Um, some of those services that you would have been able to access in our buildings, uh, you have to do online at the moment. And obviously, we've got a very restricted uh, offer uh, at the front door of the council because uh, of the need for everyone to stay at home. So if you are looking for advice and information about what's possible, then you can also check out our website. Um, there's a second question here, Jackie, from uh, Carly. I'm going to stick with your area if you don't mind and group those questions together. Is that there's a, Carly says there's a lot of scams around at the moment. Uh, what do we need to make sure that we look out for? Anything that is real uh, or genuine? Um. It's a particularly worrying thing, and um, particularly if it's somebody vulnerable, elderly, um, or just not, you know, able to deal with it. So, um, you know, the advice like, is really to never, ever, ever, um, if someone sends you an email, um, never respond to the link on the email. Um, they usually give themselves away if you, you know, I, I've had quite a few myself, to be honest. Uh, um, and it's fairly obvious if you get an email from a um, a supplier or a bank that you don't bank with but if you get one that you do bank with or from Amazon as I've had several lately to say in fact I had one this morning um, to say that your account is frozen unless you kick on this this link and um, you know unfreeze it usually the clue is in the email header you know those you, you won't find Amazon at Hotmail with, with a Hotmail address um, so if you actually look at the email address but um, regardless of that, never click on a link that's that's been given to you or an email. Go direct to the people. So go direct to your Amazon account. Go direct to your bank account. Um, never, ever, ever respond to anything that you're not expecting or haven't asked for. Um, somebody knocks on your door trying to give you an estimate for a roof, then do not take it um, unless you've actually asked somebody to give you an estimate. Um, never, ever um transfer money to somebody that's persuading you to transfer money immediately for any reason i just think there's lots and lots and lots of advice um if you look on the website there's something called the little guide to preventing fraud and cyber crime so you can get that um joe can put it on our website afterwards but it's actually a met police link um and also if you're in any doubt you know, contact trading standards and, and ask them um, for their advice. But it, it's it's a horrible thing to do. Um, you know, people that do this are just despicable, but you have to keep your wits around you. And I think particularly you have to advise your, you know, more, more vulnerable family members who may not be used to doing things on the internet or may not be used to people knocking on their door who appear quite um, you know, the, the roof ones are usually quite, I've been doing a, a roof nearby and I can see that you've got a problem. Never, ever, ever respond to those. They're usually a scam. Okay. Thank you. Um, a question has come in from um, someone online who's commented about um, Woolwich in Halloween. And I know there was a number uh, of uh, incidents in and around where people were particularly setting off fireworks, which were totally unacceptable. I mean, I think we would say uh, a big thank you to the police who actually put themselves uh, in harm's way uh, to try and protect uh, other people. Uh, I know more arrests uh, were made uh, during that operation. Uh, and obviously we did everything that we could uh, in order to prevent uh, such appalling scenes from happening. Um, do you know, Jackie, any, any more details about that? Yeah, no, it was appalling um, that there was, I live in in the middle of Woolwich, as a lot of you know, uh, there were people running up and down my street on bonfire night, um, causing havoc, and actually the police were pretty quick to intervene. 
um, that they followed them through CCTV. Our CCTV was doing a really good job in guiding the police to where they needed to be. Um, Halloween, um, which was on a Saturday, was an absolute nightmare. A couple of police in, uh, officers were injured. There were a number of arrests made. Um, what we did on bonfire night was we actually cordoned off General Gordon Square, where a lot of the stuff happened on ha at Halloween. Um, it was all planned. Um, there was a lot of online traffic being monitored. So it wasn't just that young people turned up. Um, it was orchestrated and um, our staff and police went into certain places. So for instance, Tesco's stopped selling fireworks after they went in and spoken to. They didn't sell any more after they were spoken to. So it was managed. Uh, next year, there'll be a more borough plan. Um, we've actually introduced a public spaces protection order, which includes um, fireworks. There are bits we can't do though, um, bits that are beyond our powers, but certainly um, I'm asking for more information kind of met wide about how much policing fireworks costs the Met Police so that we can use some of that information to lobby um, central government. I, I, I think it is controversial, but I think there are more people than not at this moment in time that really don't want fireworks sold to the public. Um, there's all sorts of issues about animals and animals being frightened and things as well. So I think we have to kind of look at uh, where we stand with that after we got the information. But I think certainly anyone that does have a concern about fireworks probably needs to contact their MP to lobby the government to introduce some legislation about more cautious sales of them. Because um, I certainly know that Sainsbury's in general have, have a policy, they do not sell fireworks. Um, and I think maybe whether there's legislations or not, some of the other big supermarkets ought to pick up on that. But yes, it was dreadful, but we did keep it under, keep it in hand and under control. Absolutely, and thank you for you and all of the team for the work that you did uh, to make that happen. I know that people uh, really do uh, appreciate that. And obviously, um, although it's easy to cast judgment, I think, about what uh, people think they saw. I would also just say that in terms of young people genu generally at the moment, um, I mean, I'm on uh, a lot of buses moving around the borough, and I think young people in particular are doing an extraordinary job around mask wearing, compliance, following the rules, and actually, uh, if all adults were doing the same, uh, frankly, I think that um, we would be seeing uh, a big, big difference, really. Um, and certainly, uh, all the head teachers that I've emailed or contacted uh, when I've been on you know, public transport, uh, I know doing a really great job of, with their schools of managing, uh, you know, a, a group of children and young people through a pandemic, through di very difficult times. So whilst absolutely a few people have done uh, absolutely the wrong thing, uh, we shouldn't chuck, it, chuck everyone under that same bus because actually it was not um, the vast majority of young people who were involved in that uh, appalling behaviour. I'm going to come back, um, I'm going to go to Adele quickly now and just uh, come back to enforcement in a section. So uh, Adele, obviously you look after our borough's parks and we know that parks were uh, a real lifeline and have continued to be a lifeline uh, for people during COVID. So can you tell us at the moment, what's the situation with parks? Are they open? Can people still go to the park? Yes, certainly. At the moment, all, all our parks across the borough are completely open and we are following government guidelines. Uh, we have invested a lot of money to keep in our parks, you know, up to good standards over the years. And it's a lifeline for many residents that live in the borough that don't have a, a space outside they, they can use. Personally, myself, don't have that garden space and I use the park as much as possible. Our, our parks team are fully up and working still, making sure that our parks are open during the day and the ones that need to be locked at night time are still locked. We will be rolling out in a lot of work as well during later in early next year, near the end, regarding the park investment that we put in. And so far, so good. Uh, and uh, I urge everybody to go and visit our parks, go and have, enjoy them. They are the asset of Royal Borough Greenwich. Thank you, Adele. Do you have a favourite park? 
my favorite park is actually Charlton Park. And the reason why it's got a lovely playground for the children that I can take the two kids to. And on, I'll, on, while I'm on blood air as well, I will tell everyone that we are investing in that in the playground there. We are going to be hopefully improving it, putting a lot of new playground in. And it's not far from me. It's uh, one of them incredible bit of space that we have in the borough. Great. And, and obviously, um, we can paste in the chat as well all the details of the one million pounds uh, that we are investing in our parks, which is a great uh, achievement for us and we're something really proud of. Uh, and we know in particular uh, just how much um, how much more valuable uh, our parks have become uh, given all of these rules around lockdown. So uh, that's great to hear. Jackie, do you have a favourite park in the borough? This sounds a little bit biased, but actually the nearest proper park to me is Charlton Park and um, there's St Mary's Gardens, which is is, is 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 a nice place just to walk around but Charlton Park is is one with quite a lot of facilities and if I go there with my um great granddaughter um there's lots of things for her to do she likes playing on the the, the swings and the the equipment and also likes feeding squirrels and, and and eating food in the cafe when it's open so that's a bit of a win-win really lovely uh, now, let's move on. Adele, also, um, a, a difficult subject for many is that we know uh, that during this pandemic, um, obviously, we've had to change the way that funerals uh, and weddings and other things happen. Um, can you tell us, um, in terms of uh, what is currently the rules around cemeteries and funerals? So around the funerals at the moment is still within the government guidelines of having 30 people to a funeral, but it all depends on the venue that you'll be going to and the size of the venue and how many people they can take for that funeral, but the limit is 30. We are continuing, we have got an amazing team that's in the borough that's dealing with all our funeral arrangements from the registrars to the people that work in the front line. And so far we're monitoring government guidelines and we'll keep updating our website if anything changes. And so far it's 30 people to a funeral, depending on the venue size. I just have to emphasize there that obviously we know that that will be uh, for many people very distressing uh, and we are truly sorry and obviously any of us who've been to a funeral in COVID times uh, know just what a horrible uh, experience it is uh, but it's not only for your safety but it's also for the safety of our staff and all the people who work in crematoriums who we need uh, to keep uh, safe as well. And um, so we would ask for your compliance in that, uh, recognising that it is not a situation that any of us uh, want to be in at all. And one thing that we are, uh, have looked at and are continuing to look at is what we can do uh, once the pandemic is over and perhaps in a memorial garden uh, or something new in one of our parks so that actually we can have somewhere uh, that we can really focus um, all of this loss on because everyone uh, has been uh, experiencing that and, and having a shared uh, place to remember uh, everyone uh, who has sadly lost their lives uh, could be uh, a, a glimmer of hope uh, as some of us want to go in these very difficult uh, times. Now Adele, finally you've got um, libraries in your uh, responsibilities as well. Can I pop in at the moment to get a book? All our libraries are open but for if you wanted a book, you have to book online and order the book that you want for click and collect. Or if you wanted to use a computer, you have to as well book online. But you can go down to the library and, uh, and uh, speak to someone there and ask them to use a, a computer. But you're going to have to wait if there's not one available. But most of our services are click and co collect. If you go to better libraries on their website, it, it tells you all 12 libraries are open. We got our out home outreach team as well, delivering uh, books as well if needs be for the residents that can't go out there and get books for shielding reasons or health reasons. And it's a great thing that we have, uh, that we continue to have all our 12 libraries open for all our residents that need it, all the young people that need to do studying during these uncertain times. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to return uh, to Jackie now for some, uh, we had a question online. Um, around trading standards, Jackie, and whether you might say a bit about what trading standards are up to uh, in the pandemic. But we've also had uh, a question uh, about burglaries from Paleo. And Paleo's asked that last, uh, in the last lockdown, 
um, there was an increase in, in burglaries in Paleo's area, but they don't say what their area is, I'm afraid. So uh, I don't know uh, where they live. Um, but could you say something about the work that we're perhaps doing with the police and neighbourhood watch uh, and anything people should uh, really do to reduce their risk of being burgled? Yeah. Um, and the latest figures that I have to hand are from September 19 to September 2020. So that's 12 months. Uh, clearly includes the lockdown period, but um, covers more than the lockdown period. Um, and actually residential burglary during that time fell by 35% um, rather than increased. Now, during lockdown, um, I guess that that would make some sense in that everyone was at home or most people were at home. So the opportunities, opportunistic um, burgling your home during the day when you're not in was removed. Um, so you'd expect those figures to fall during lockdown, um, but certainly they fell over the 12 months. Um, we are working closely with the police all the time and with Neighbourhood Watch who are very brilliant. Um, we, we kind of share the data um, between us and the police very regularly. We look at areas where um, things may be on the increase, on the increase and we look at um, what to do about that. So that might include um, more regular patrols um, in those areas that have experienced a, a, an increase. Um, we look at providing advice to residents about um, what to do to make their home as safe as possible. Certainly Neighbourhood Watch runs a whole load of masterclass um, sessions for people to look at what they can do to prevent burglary happening to them as far as possible uh, and there have been a lot of new neighborhood watch groups set up who kind of are quite vital really in the the keeping the crime down so we're going to continue doing all of that um, and and more um, there is again advice that that i will ask our comms to put on our website which is the met police prevention um, residential burglary there's also other stuff from neighborhood watch that can go on as well so that people who have concerns can kind of go on and see what it is and what they can do um, and in more normal times certainly the crime prevention police can come round and talk to people about what they can do to keep their homes safe there's a lot of work that goes on between agencies brilliant thank you and um i just want to really say you know kind of if you do see something that you are worried about obviously you can uh, report that through uh, the usual channels. So please make sure that anything you are concerned about uh, is flagged up. Now, I can see in the Facebook comments, we've got uh, a number of comments about buses and road closures from uh, Tamor uh, and um, uh, Pippa uh, about Thames Path. Um, I'll just try and pick these ones up uh, now. So. On road closures, uh, obviously we've had a lot of things happening uh, at the same time, uh, and that has been caused uh, by the pandemic. And the fact is, uh, with such restrictions on public transport and the limited capacity, we have had to make changes in order that everyone can continue to move around. The fact is this, that we have seen, not just in the pandemic, but throughout the last 10 years in Greenwich, huge increases in the amount of, of traffic uh, in the borough and certainly between the period of 2009 and 2019 there were over 130 million more journey million more miles uh, made by car journeys uh, in the borough so what we are asking people to do is to limit those uh, journeys uh, to those which are essential uh, yes we are having to make changes uh, to keep people uh, on main roads where they need to be and we absolutely are having to make priority for buses and other uh, forms of sustainable transport to enable them uh, to move around as well. Uh, I recognise that there's obviously been some disruption and we're really sorry for that. Uh, but obviously in the long term, um, we are reviewing all of the, all of the changes and, and making sure that we take all of that data into account uh, and then moving forward. But we do absolutely all need to be travelling uh, more sustainably. I'd also just like to emphasise uh, that for those people worried about public transport, actually public transport remains open for essential journeys. And my experience of going on public transport actually has been normally uh, a very safe one. 
uh, obviously uh, more people are now wearing masks. TfL and the Mayor of London are doing a great job now in terms of finding people uh, who do not uh, do the right thing. Uh, and obviously if you have an exemption, that's one thing, but everyone else on public transport should be wearing masks and observing social distancing uh, where possible. Um, so please um, just do the right thing uh, if you are on public transport, because it is for your safety uh, as well as everyone else's. Um, on the question about the Thames Path, um, obviously the Thames Path is a wonderful space, uh, but it is very narrow. Uh, last time uh, we did close off parts of the Thames Path. Uh, we had major problems with people breaking the barriers that we were putting on, closing the barriers. Um, and all I would encourage people to do uh, really is make the most of the bits um, that really are as wide as, as possible. Uh, certainly that area between the Trafalgar Tavern uh, and the Naval College is really difficult uh, ordinarily uh, without having to be distant uh, for a pandemic. We are working uh, with the Royal Naval College. Those grounds remain open. Uh, so actually you can come off of the river park uh, and do a diversion uh, further inland there, which, which is the safer option. Um, so please uh, do uh, try and be responsible and consider uh, the risks um, that is happening there. Also, um, I can see we've been joined online by Councillor Babatola from Thamesley. So Ollie, uh, it's nice to see uh, you uh, are joining us here. Um, also, just to say thank you to Olu uh, and all of the other councillors who took part in our Remembrance Day activities this weekend. Uh, thanks hugely to many people who stayed at home. Uh, I know that was probably a very difficult thing to do for people, uh, but we did have good representatives from across the borough uh, and across the key organisations uh, observing social distancing, uh, taking part in those incredibly uh, important events. So thank you uh, very much for that. Quick question here, I think, from Candice uh, about the Garland Road um, uh, playground. Uh, Candice, I'm afraid uh, there's no easy, easy way to say this, but I think you might be a lone voice because uh, Councillor Kyra and myself have just got back from Garland Road, actually, uh, where I can tell you there's many, many happy children uh, and families who were waiting to come in who were all full of uh, happy screams and enjoyment. So. Uh, might be one of those easier things to go down and experience rather online because uh, everyone was certainly happy uh, just over uh, an hour ago. So uh, we're really glad uh, that that investment has also uh, happened uh, and is a great place for your uh, families uh, and children uh, to enjoy. Uh, now let's go over to Adele. Adele, for those people um, like myself who enjoy the occasional sporting activity, is sport allowed during lockdown? What is allowed and what isn't allowed? Uh, at the moment, Danny, during the government guidance, the, 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 it, it's one of them things that, you know, you can say it's not clear enough, but to what we have found out, that all you, you, people can still go out as many times as they like a day to exercise with their own households, uh, the bubbles, and you go out for walks, running, and cycling. All our parks are open, as I mentioned earlier on. All organized community sports is not permitted at the moment. And that, that's things like basketball courts, football courts, tennis courts, outdoor gyms. They're all closed due to the government guidelines. And on top of that, all indoor sporting facilities as well are closed. Swimming pools, indoor gyms, fitness rooms, dance studios, climbing walls are all closed till the 2nd of December. You know, it's, I know myself, I'm one of them people that always say, I need to go to the gym, I signed up to the gym, and once I signed up to the gym, it gets closed down, which is terrible. You know, I know a lot of people out there say, why is the gyms closed? What we can do is only follow the government guidelines to make sure everybody stays safe, and you know, for the safety of their family as well. All grassroots sports for children, football games and all that, that's completely stopped for outdoors and indoors, except for what's happening within schools. So within schools, playgrounds, if they're doing football sports and stuff like that, that continue because it's done in a school bubble. But all our overall sports facilities that we have in the borough are all closed to the 2nd of December. Okay, thank you. And I look forward to joining you uh, at the gym uh, as soon as we uh, can, Adele. Not for spin. <laughs> <laughs> 
and perhaps we'll even get Councillor Smith along for a little session down at the waterfront we can do some enforcement and some leisure activity uh, at the same time. Uh, okay, now we've got a number of questions online, so I'll just try to deal uh, with these. Um, Jackie, are we going to give free parking for teachers? Um, it's not being discussed. Um, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I, I think it's part of the discussion about whether we're going to do it for key workers, but um, it's a discussion we need to have. We need to follow what London councils does so that one council doesn't do something that others aren't doing, but we'll keep it under review. Thanks. And Nicola, I'm sorry if they are having to, um, and just to be clear about this as well, is actually public transport use has only been discouraged for journeys which aren't essential. And if you are a teacher being asked to come to work, that's an essential journey. So actually trans public transport is uh, a perfectly viable option uh, for people uh, who are uh, teachers. Okay, um, quick question here. I'm going to run through these now. So uh, we've, um, and do feel free to send more in because we've run out of the uh, initial questions we were sent in. Um, a comment here from Lynn Kemp actually to say, I do think people riding bikes need to have more laws. Uh, they're dangerous to the public walking on the pavement. Uh, absolutely, and I think we would uh, agree. That's why we're trying to bring in infrastructure to support people cycling safely in the road. Uh, but as I know from someone who just started cycling earlier on in the year, you're only going to cycle in the road if you feel safe enough uh, to do so. So it is that kind of balance. And that's why we've been re really pushing for wands and set cycle segregation uh, to come in. Um, but also I've been really, really pleased to see uh, actually so many different types of people cycling. I think that's been a massive uh, change during the lockdown. Uh, and actually Greenwich is not filled with people who are just kind of middle-aged, white, belting round on Strava, trying to do a personal best. Uh, you know, actually lots more families, lots more, lots more children cycling. So long may that uh, continue. Um, I think I've answered Candice's question on trading standards uh, and corner shops. Um, so that's uh, fine. Um, Nicola, um, Kensington and Chelsea may have offered free parking for teachers, but they can probably afford it, uh, given the level of money in their reserves, I'm afraid. So uh, each council is in a very different uh, financial position. Uh, Greenwich has had over £130 million pounds of government money uh, taken uh, away from us over the last 10 years. Frankly, if they gave us all that money back, I'd be looking to give teachers uh, key worker housing as well as free parking. Uh, and actually, that's a fight that we continue uh, to keep uh, making. There's some comments here from Connor. Uh, Connor, thanks for all of your comments and recognising um, that actually uh, the points that you've made as a disabled person who's trying to travel around Greenwich, uh, we need to take those offline uh, and have a look at them. Um, so we will share that in uh, and make sure that we do uh, address uh, the points uh, that you uh, have raised. Um, and also here, um, Gina, on buses, just to say um, that actually we are uh, really doing uh, all the work that we can with Transport for London uh, to make buses easier and more reliable. Uh, clearly buses are going to be more reliable if they can move freely uh, without getting caught in traffic. Uh, and we will, of course, uh, be reviewing uh, all of the bus lanes and the new arrangements to make sure uh, that they are uh, working. Uh, OK, I've now got uh, another uh, question that's just come in. Um, bear with me one second. Um, from Martin here. So Martin's asking about what the council's long-term plans are for dealing with the pandemic. Well, obviously, Martin, um, thanks for your question. Um, I mean, Greenwich is part of uh, London uh, and London is part of the country. Uh, and one of the things uh, which I have found personally uh, the most challenging about this since March uh, is the lack of a strategy from the government to help get us through this pandemic, uh, whether it's been the absolute failure of the test and trace system, the Serco test and trace system, in order to be able to provide confidence to people, whether it's been the absolute appalling uh, things we saw in the first few months of the pandemic when our key staff, our nurses, did not have PPE. Uh, and here we are uh, only yesterday uh, with the government uh, finally doing U-turn 672 uh, and finally agreeing to pay uh, money for hungry kids. Uh, and I have to say, uh, Marcus Rashford's done an absolutely extraordinary campaign. Here in Greenwich, we've been feeding children during the summer holidays for the past uh, four years. 
what I can tell you uh, about the Greenwich strategy uh, is that actually the work that we have been doing uh, has massively paid off. Uh, we are the lowest borough in London if you look at the level of community of infections, uh, which is no accident. You know, we've been working flat out with our care homes, with our teachers, with our schools, with you know businesses to make sure that everyone is as COVID secure as they possibly can be, that people follow the rules. And I'm really proud actually of the work that we've done in partnership across Greenwich uh, to deal with this pandemic uh, head on. Uh, it's impossible to say where we'll get to. Uh, we're in a number uh, of conversations uh, with the health service uh, to make sure that as soon as that vaccine uh, is available, we can roll it out uh, to as many people as possible uh, in this borough. Uh, we are in discussions, you can see from the news today, that there's more positive announcements about the vaccines which the government have purchased. So we are uh, making plans uh, to support uh, the rollout of that vaccine across Greenwich uh, as quickly as possible. I can't say too much more uh, about that yet, and I certainly don't want to preempt uh, anything in terms of what may be uh, coming. Um, but I think it feels uh, certainly from the news today and from news that we've seen in the past couple of weeks that actually um, this has been, um, the, the vaccine is, is probably uh, close uh, to being made available, which I think will be a, an absolutely great uh, thing. Um, and obviously, uh, as soon as you have more information on that, we will uh, let people uh, have it. Um, Candice is asking um, about um, carers uh, question for about carers um, and I guess actually um, Jackie I know Jackie's got personal experience of caring um, and we, we do try to support carers as much as possible uh, but recognize it is uh, a challenging uh, role so we would we'll definitely keep an eye uh, out and be working with our groups to support carers uh, as much as possible. Jackie do you want to share any thoughts on, on how what we can do for carers? Well, I think there's two levels of carers, aren't there? There are paid carers and there are unpaid carers and unpaid carers, I think, are feeling the brunt of everything. I um, don't know if Candice has personal experience, but um, my sister doesn't live in, in RBG. I wish she did. Um, but, you know, my experience of the pandemic has been awful. She's seriously disabled. Um, she's immune suppressed. Um, Therefore, she was shielding from March till the 1st of August, uh, a very long time during which there was no uh, day centre provision that she usually has, no respite provision. Um, all sorts of things stopped that, that seemed crazy, like podiatry stopped, even though she needs that. Um, and everything that, that happened that was provided previously seemed to uh, come down on the family to have to replace um, during a time when everyone's suffering. So, um, you know, I really do think that things have to be fought through um, um, for, for carers to make sure that at the end of this pandemic that everyone is alive well, but not suffering from so much stress um, that actually those care relationships are completely broken down. And I think that is a serious issue which the National Carers associations are actually raising that you know families shouldn't just be left to do this on their own absolutely okay so that brings us to the end of our questions now so i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's joined in uh, and participated in this session we've just posted in the chat function details of the testing centers that are now available in the borough obviously we would emphasize that ideally people should book a test slot. Uh, we do seem to have really good availability now locally, uh, thanks to the continued campaigning efforts uh, of this council to get uh, the community testing in place that we need. We've got test centers in Avery Hill, in Plumstead, in the Avery Street car park, uh, and shortly to open one uh, in Devonport House down in Greenwich. Um, and actually we would encourage all of you, uh, certainly who need to get a test to really make the most of those. Um, you can, if you're a key worker and you do have urgent symptoms and can't get through, uh, you can turn up uh, for a test without booking an appointment, but obviously it's always advisable to book that test slot uh, so that you know it's absolutely guaranteed uh, and you can get access to testing. 
So thank you so much uh, for everyone uh, who's joined. Uh, we'll be back to the last finish session uh, very soon. Uh, please have a good week, stay safe, uh, look after each other, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you.